YouTube, my name is Paul. Hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back to another Spotlight video. The second CD32 Spotlight video I've done in a week. And the reason I chose this particular game is because I was going to do a video with all my hardest to get games, pick three games from each of my collections to show you in response to a, a question I was asked in my Q&A. So, unfortunately this game wouldn't have made that top three, but it is a very, very difficult game to get hold of. And that's Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends Pinball on the CD32. Now this game I've had in the collection now for about three or four years, and I won it, I think, for about 200 quid. Now, it was one that came up, I'm pretty sure, last year, which went for a similar amount of money, but it was quite heavily sun faded. Now, this particular copy itself isn't mint. It's probably in a 6, maybe a 7 out of 10, if you're feeling generous, condition. But yeah, it's, it's not a bad little pinball game. Certainly something I wouldn't have bought back in the day. It was published by Alternative Software back in 1995, so right at the very end of the Amiga's commercial life. Now, this game was also developed by Spidersoft, and they were responsible for one of the worst diagnosis games ever made, and that was Cliffhanger. They also made Pinball Mania, which is a game I've never played, to be completely honest. But yeah, it's a desirable title for the CD32, definitely one of the top five, maybe six, hardest to get games on the system. So I was very, very fortunate to get it. Don't get a lot inside the box. Um, all you get is a jewel case. And the instructions are on the uh, inlay, as per usual. Yeah, I thought I'd do this particular one, because unfortunately it doesn't quite make sort of the top three most difficult to get CD32 games that I own. Nothing at all on the back there, which is common. I think I've had, a, I've had about two jewel cases through my hands in the past. But only the one box. But yeah, there's a couple of um, no, it's one copy of this on eBay at the moment, but it's been sold by a German collector. It goes by the name of I think it's International Retro Guide or something like that. But his particular copy is up for sale for something like a thousand euros, which is way, way, way in excess of what this game's probably even worth. So yeah, I thought I'd shine the spotlight on something that's actually genuinely rare. From the collection and the CD32 generally, there are a lot of really difficult to get games, even though most common games don't come up every week. So, yeah, let's check it out anyway. Welcome to Thomas the Tank Engine Pinball, a game I certainly didn't have on my Amiga. Now I'm pretty sure there is a floppy disk version. I'm sure it's a 1200 version as well. My brother used to watch this program incessantly to the point where if you wasn't actually watching it yourself, you, you know exactly what the characters are going to say to each other. I didn't mind it, but I was probably a little bit too old to enjoy the, enjoy the series to be honest. Yeah, let's crack on. This game, I'm not particularly good at it. Like I said, the only pinball game I really, really enjoyed on the Amiga was Pinball uh, Fantasies, which I've played for hours. I wasn't too bad at it either. Right. One player, indeed. No, don't want two players. I want one player. I'm having difficulties. Here we go. Yeah, pretty much a standard pinball affair. Smash the ball around a flipping table. Using the old flippers. Little quote there from the old Tom's Tank Engine programs. I can't stand the new ones. They look flipping dreadful. Have ever seen the new series, which I watched a couple of years ago? Caught a glimpse of it. I thought, what the flipping have they done to this program? That's a great start. I'm not good at this whatsoever, so it shouldn't take long. I might even be able to show you most of the tables as a consequence of my poor performance. Do all the usual stuff. You can tilt the table and... Hmm. 
Yeah, the game's music is strange because even though it's on CD, you would have thought they would have taken the music straight from the program, but they didn't. Oh, hello. Of course, the most amazing thing I've done in this game so far. It does play quite well. Bloody hell. So yeah, it should be quite a short spotlight video. I said before, the game is really difficult to get hold of. And you can sort of understand why. It came out in 95 and I can't imagine many people who owned an Amiga CD32 would have bought this game. In fact, even the floppy disk version don't come up very often. Tables are quite decently designed. I think they're quite simple. Even though that um, I can't play the game very well. I think I only get a couple of balls as well. That's it. That's the end of um, Percy's table. Let's go and check out another one. Got a very basic menu screen. In fact, it looks like a direct port over from the 1200 version, to be honest. Let's check out Toby. Some kind of caboose or something, isn't he? Hmm. There he is. Another really useful engine. Here we go. I can't say I'm overwhelmed by this game, but it's worth checking it out. Certainly a game I'm pleased to have in the collection because it's flipping difficult to find. In terms of its gameplay though, it's nothing amazing. Ooh, bloody hell, what am I doing here? Doing alright. Biggest score in the history of Thomas the Tank Engine Pinball. You bastard. I wonder if any of you have ever, ever played this game yourselves. What do you think of it? That's lucky. Yeah, it's not a lot to say about this game, to be honest. Apart from the fact it's bloody hard to find. It's only claim to fame, really. But yeah. There you have it. All its, uh, its glory. It's very smooth, I'll give it that. Controls are quite responsive. Wow. It's just trying to get the ball nicely placed onto the old flipper there, isn't it, really? Not doing too bad on this one. Therapeutic, this game. At least I got a thousand points. Or something to brag about, anyway. Oh. No! Yeah, you can't thump the ball around the old uh, table in this one, though. It's, the ball's quite slow. With like pinball fantasies and all, the tables go mental. I guess this was aimed for children. Ah, there you go. Biggest bonus I've ever achieved in this game. Last ball, I think.
tú aquí. What was your favourite pinball game on the Amiga? I don't think I've ever played... There was one after Pinball Illusions, but I can't remember what it was called. It's quite a desirable little title nowadays. So there was Dreams, there was Fantasies, there was Illusions, and there was something else. Slam Tilt, was it? Oh, come on. Get up there, you slod. Right, I'm going to check out the Thomas table, which you would have seen three out of four tables then, and call it a day. That was Toby. You can probably tell this game doesn't really do it for me. It's quite a, a boring little number. It's worth checking out a game that goes for quite a bit of money these days. Just to see what it's all about really. And most games unfortunately that are expensive are a bit like this. A bit on the old mundane side. Right. Not the old fat controller off his train. Carriage collected. Look at that. We. I've got a clue what I'm doing. We'll just do it anyway. I think Alternative released quite a few games under the Thomas label. This was the only one for the CD32. Ooh. There never seems to be enough power behind that ball to get it around a table. Yeah, the graphics aren't too bad. AGA chipset there. There's old colour palette being used. Yeah, there's not really a lot else I can really say about this game. Oh, for God's sake. Lost ball. And one carriage. There we go. God's sake. Right. That's me. And Thomas the Tank Engine. Out of here. I'll see you for the conclusion. <laughs>